just wear it. But why? You're a scientist, try to look like one. It's really hot and not all scientists wear lab coats anyway. How do you expect people to trust you if you're not wearing a lab coat? Well, people can listen to what I'm saying and then use their critical thinking skills to work out whether or not what I'm saying makes sense. Okay, fine. <laughs> it's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science here, chemistry PhD and hyperpigmentation prone skincare nerd. Today I'm going to be talking about how to make your own DIY vitamin C serum that will actually work. If you like this sort of video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. What does vitamin C do? I've talked about vitamin C before in my video on hyperpigmentation. Vitamin C is a superstar anti-aging ingredient. Vitamin C acts as an antioxidant, which means that it soaks up free radical damage. This can happen as a result of UV exposure, pollution, or just natural aging. I have a video that talks a bit more about how antioxidants work. It also fades hyperpigmentation, such as the brown spots that you might sometimes get on your skin after acne, as well as sunspots. But the big problem with vitamin C is that it tends to be really unstable. This is especially the case with L-ascorbic acid, the main type of vitamin C that's been shown to work in anti-aging products. When L-ascorbic acid is in a water-based product, it tends to decompose really easily. It turns into yellow dehydroascorbic acid, DHA or DHAA, and other products really quickly. At 25 degrees and pH 3.5 in amber glass, which is light protective, about 50% is gone in a week. DHA can convert back into L-ascorbic acid on your skin, and there's no good evidence that it's bad for your skin, but there's not really much evidence that it's good for your skin either, and it can turn into other products too. You can stabilize L-ascorbic acid by combining it with some other ingredients. A lot of products take this approach, they usually combine it with vitamin E and ferulic acid. This is done in a lot of popular vitamin C serums, such as the ones from SkinCeuticals, Paula's Choice, Timeless, and Drunk Elephant. But if you want to DIY this combo, then it's a bit more of a hassle. You'll have to buy extra vitamin E and ferulic acid, plus vitamin E doesn't dissolve well in water. That means that you'll have to use an emulsifier so that it'll sit well with your water-based vitamin C. If you've gone to this trouble, then on top of that, you'll probably also want to use a preservative so that you can keep the serum for a longer time. The price of all these ingredients can add up quickly, and if you've ever done any DIY before, you'll probably know that you end up accumulating lots of ingredients that you never quite use up. If you do want to go down this more complicated route, then Holy Snails has a nice recipe, which I'll link to in the description. You can also stabilize L-ascorbic acid by by changing its structure, so turning it into a derivative. Some examples of these derivatives are magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, ascorbyl tetraisopalmitate or ATIP, and tetrahexyldecyl ascorbate or THDA. However, these tend to be quite expensive compared to plain L-ascorbic acid, plus it's not well established how well these convert back into L-ascorbic acid in your skin. So that's why I think a simple DIY vitamin C serum that you remake every week or so is a nice solution to some of these problems. I generally find DIY a bit of a pain. You have to buy all these ingredients, you have to mix them together, you have to play around with the formula, and there's all this washing up that you generally have to do afterwards. But this DIY serum doesn't have a lot of these drawbacks. All the ingredients are quite easy to get and inexpensive. It only takes about five minutes to make it once you get the hang of it. You also have a better idea of how fresh it is compared to a store-bought product. You don't have to think about how long it's been sitting on the shelf, how long the delivery is, whether it's gone through any massive temperature fluctuations while it's sitting in water. You can also easily adjust the amount of vitamin C in your serum. You can just add a bit more or a bit less L-ascorbic acid if you want more effectiveness or less irritation. It's also cheap enough that I can use it on other parts of my body without feeling bad about using an expensive product. To make a vitamin C serum which matches what's been used in studies that have found positive effects, you want something that's generally between 5 and 20% at a pH of about 3.5. So here's what you need for this DIY vitamin C serum. First, you need L-ascorbic acid powder. As a dry solid, L-ascorbic acid is reasonably stable and cheap. You can find this at most supplement stores or you can order it off iHerb like I did. There are also lots of options on Amazon. You also want some distilled or deionized water. Metal ions in your water can speed up how quickly L-ascorbic acid decomposes. You can also use tap water and just make sure you remake your serum more frequently. You'll also need some baking soda. The pH of L-ascorbic acid 
by itself in water is going to be a bit too low, it's a bit too acidic, which means that it'll cause unnecessary irritation. Baking soda is alkaline, which is the opposite of this, and so we can use it to adjust the pH back up closer to skin pH. You'll also need some pH strips. It doesn't need to be really, really precise, so any indicator strips should work. I generally prefer four square indicator strips, so I don't have to second guess my color matching abilities. You'll also want a quarter teaspoon measuring spoon. A quarter teaspoon translates to about one and a half grams of ascorbic acid, but it does depend on your particular powder. Ideally, if you weigh it out, it's a bit more accurate, but because there's so much leeway in the percentage of vitamin C that we can use in this serum, then it isn't a massive issue for this specific recipe. Of course, you'll also need a suitable container to store your vitamin C serum. You want an airtight-ish clean container. It doesn't have to be truly airtight because you'll be remaking this quite frequently. If you have an old container, you can clean and reuse that. You can also use some aluminium foil to protect your vitamin C serum from light. So here's how you make your DIY serum. Your first step is to work out your recipe. Start by working out how much serum you can fit into your container in milliliters. You should be able to find this out from the place you bought the bottle from or from the packaging if it's a reused container. If you can't work it out, you can use a teaspoon and measure how many teaspoons you can fit into your container. Next, you need to calculate how much l ascorbic acid you need. You take the percentage you want, divide it by 100, then multiply it by the volume of the container, and that will give you the mass of l ascorbic acid you need in grams. For example, if I'm making 20 mils of a 10% l ascorbic acid, I'm going to need 2 grams. Next, you need to clean your container. I recommend washing it out thoroughly with soap and water, then rinsing it with alcohol a few times, then rinsing it with distilled water and letting it dry. It doesn't have to be completely sterile because, again, we're going to be remaking this quite frequently plus it's at quite a low pH which micros will have a hard time surviving in. Then you put your L-ascorbic acid into your container. Add about half of the distilled water that you're going to use into the container and shake it until it dissolves. We're only using half of the water at this stage because it's a lot easier to shake a container that's not completely full. Then you add the rest of the water and turn it upside down a few times to make sure it's thoroughly mixed. Next we need to adjust the pH. Put a drop of the serum onto your pH strip and look at what the pH is. Then add a tiny bit of baking soda, recheck the pH and keep doing this until you get it to somewhere between 3 and 4. Finally, you can wrap your container up in foil to protect it from light. This is the easiest and cheapest way of protecting something from light, and so this will slow down how quickly your vitamin C serum decomposes. With light protection, I found that this DIY serum lasts about one week before going a little bit yellow, and then two weeks before it goes really yellow. The pH is low enough that microbial growth shouldn't be a big issue, and you're not keeping it for very long. Once you're used to this process, it probably takes less than five minutes to remake, so even someone who's pretty lazy like me can remake it quite frequently. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram at labmuffinbeautyscience, and check out my blog for more nerdy beauty science. See you next time. Are you a scientist or a scientist isn't? I am so sweaty.